A few days ago, Sportsman Network was invited along to fish with professional angler Whitey Outlaw on the upper portion of Santee in South Carolina. Whitey is one of the top crappie anglers in the country and has won more than his share of crappie fishing tournaments and championships. He currently fishes the American Crappie Trail with his partner and son, Matt Outlaw. After catching some crappie around stumps and sunken brush piles in an open area of water, we took a ride into the more swampy areas of the famed Santee Cooper Lake system to fish some grass beds. If you look real closely, you can see that the cypress trees are just beginning to show a hint of fall in their color. The summer isn't letting go easily. It was a hot day, but Whitey said this technique works in all types of weather during all seasons of the year. We approached a grass bed that Whitey was familiar with and parked right on top of it. I thought surely he meant we would be fishing along the edges of the bed, but he assured me we would catch fish right in the middle of it. Before long, we did just that. Dog, man. Yep. What I'm using today to catch these fish out of this grass is a pro built Whitey Outlaw series that, that we just come out with and a crappy magnet and it's uh, orange and chartreuse. We, I found out that these, these black crappy like the smallest bait better in the summertime. I'm using the 1 16th with a number four hoop and crappy magnet because it's a small diameter and, and length. So, summertime I like to, to, to lighten it up a little bit, you know, the hot, hot conditions, the water's hot and, and, and them fish ain't going to exert a lot of energy to run that bait down. And it's kind of, the hot summer and the hot water is about like midwinter. They're pretty close to the same. You want to downsize, fish a little slower, you know, and, and use a little smaller baits. Here on Sandy Cooper, this is early October. And, and the water's still hot. You know, it's in the mid to the high 80s because it's 90 something degrees today. And th this type fishing is only going to get better and better because once it cools off and this, this grass goes to dying back, the grass will still stay there and float and the fish will still be under it. And the colder it gets, the better I like it for two reasons. One thing, that there'll be more fish under it. Plus, it's easier on me as the fisherman to get out here on this stuff. But just remember, fish is slow. Don't fish fast. If you fish it fast, you're going to overlook some fish. Just fish slow and, and change colors because I'm going to tell you, fishing grass is a color game. Some, some days they want a certain color. The next day or so, they want something else. And the, and the water has a lot to do with that too. So it, it's a color game. We moved between grass beds mainly to create a breeze for cooling ourselves down. Come on, Anna. Hello. Brim, look at that. <sighs> the shell cracker. The shell cracker. How about that? Ain't what we want, but hey, catch all kinds. With another species of panfish on the scoreboard, it was time to move on to another area. Look what I got here is a molly, a warm mouth, a red eye, whatever you want to call them, we call them mollies. Some of these grass beds will be eat up with these fish certain times of the year, and, and they'll be up to about a pound a piece. And they're good eating, they're good table fare. So if you catch them, you know, and don't know what they are, they're good eating. So these grass beds hold crappy, brim, shell cracker, bass, catfish, and mollies. I mean, they hold all kinds of fish. You take a jig pole, a 16th ounce jig, and get some grass, you're going to take some fish home. All you got to do is slow down and fish it. You will take some fish home. 